Hi, JupeQ. Eddie Goomba has officially declined your request for a debate following uh, certain revelations about your use of SOC accounts. If you like, though, I can debate in his place. Your initial challenge video didn't give a great deal to work with. It contained very little that could really be seen as a cogent argument. Um, one of the few things that you did say that seemed to be, if not correct, at least uh, a, a complete statement was your claim about probability theory and what this says about the formation of human bodies. This is a common creationist argument. You see it all the time. Basically, it works on the idea that evolutionists, or biologists as we prefer to call ourselves, think of evolution as a process where bits and pieces just randomly assemble themselves into a final perfect design. Um, and then you go and attack that argument by claiming that, well, 747s don't assemble themselves in uh, junkyards which is uh, valid to the extent that 747s do not assemble themselves in junkyards, but it's really beside the point because that's not what evolutionists claim. Evolutionary theory says that you start off with something that is very simple, very crude, and often not very efficient. And then through the process of random changes, followed by the principle of natural selection, the illusion of design can be created. I'll give you an example of how this works. Right now there's this big thing in uh, engineering. They use computers running so-called evolutionary algorithms. And you give it a simple task such as design an antenna. Now, a computer can be programmed with all of the Maxwell's equations, making that easy enough to solve for a particular, work out how efficient a design would be. But it's very difficult to start from that formula and work out from basic principles an ideal antenna design. So what we do instead is there is a method where you start off with a very crude antenna and then you just ask the computer to randomly change parts of it. You just increase a length here, you bend something there, change angles around. But every time you do a change, the computer runs the maths on it and sees whether this would be a better design than what we started off with. And after a large number of generations, it could be dozens of generations or hundreds or thousands, depending on the complexity of the thing, the computer ends up converging onto a nicely optimized solution, which ends up being a very sophisticated design in many cases. Uh, it has been, it has occurred a number of times that the most efficient designs by human designers have been surpassed by these genetic algorithms. Now, that is not really a random process. That is a process where randomness is then worked on via testing. That is exactly, however, how it works in the wild, because evolutionary algorithms are, in fact, modelled on biological evolutionary theory. And the way it works in the wild is if a change is beneficial, the change will most likely be preserved in the next generation. If the change kills the organism, well, the organism will be stillborn and it won't grow up to have any children and therefore it won't pass that on to its descendants. Other times the change or mutation may be less deadly. It would simply result in a reduction of the performance and therefore it would be outcompeted. That's pretty much all there is to evolution. It's the process of good genes being passed on and bad genes not being passed on. Where the good and the bad come from is a random process, but whether they're passed on or not is certainly not random. 
this makes a um, mockery of the whole probability argument that is used. Nobody claims that evolution is the lucky assembly of large numbers of changes all in one go. They are tested one at a time by evolution. Another point that you made was regarding free radicals. Um, Eddie did address that. Um, free radicals actually are a naturally occurring thing. Uh, you may not know this, but free radicals will form when you are hit by sunlight. Uh, they're formed in foods. Uh, in fact, they're used by the body for all sorts of biological processes. If we didn't have free radicals, then our bodies wouldn't work. Uh, where they cause a lot of harm though is when they get into the wrong place. A free radical is a highly reactive species and if they attach themselves to your DNA they will turn your DNA into a radical and then it will have all sorts of chemistry where it will recombine in all sorts of nasty ways resulting in mutations which for a highly optimized organism like a human being most of those mutations will simply result in something nasty like cancer and uh, that of course is not a good thing. Evolution does not lead to humans living very long lives. Evolution only works as far as it's good for the species if you can live long enough to raise your children to reproductive age and maybe support their children but it doesn't work any further than that. If we have a mutation which makes us uh, much more effective when we're young, that same mutation might be harmful in old age. We get a mutation which results in our immune system being more sensitive. That may mean we survive childhood illnesses better, but at the same time it could result in an overactive immune system which results in it attacking the body as you get older. Or another change might be a mutation which results in calcium being uh, more readily deposited on bones. Now that's a good thing if uh, robust bones are a good thing, but it's a bad thing if that same gene results in calcium depositing itself inside your arteries giving you heart attacks when you're older. Of course, if that particular mutation only kills you when you reach the age of 110, then it isn't going to be selected for by the process of evolution. Uh, natural selection will only work on a change that affects your ability to bring up the next generation. It doesn't affect your ability much past that. So, Evolution, in fact, does result in numerous design flaws like that. Uh, if you're interested in it, we can provide additional examples for you, but uh, I'd suggest you just start researching this on the internet. Hit Google, go to Wikipedia, uh, even the Talk Origins archive. Um, all of this information is there.